Welcome back to The Talking Hedge. I'm Josh Kincaid, Capital Markets Analyst and host of your Cannabis Business Podcast. Today, we're going to take a look at the top 10 cannabis stock news stories of the week. Starting with number 10 on the list, these two companies are turning LSD, Magic Mushrooms, Ketamine, MDMA into the next blockbuster drug. And this story is playing out more like a pay-to-play system. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and skip this moving forward. <clears throat> these seem to make it on the list every single week, but uh, I'm not a fan of Bruce Linton. Uh, previous CEO of Canopy Growth. I think he's more of a PR stunt than an actual individual who can generate revenue. I'm no longer going to cover what he's doing. This seems to make it on the top 10 list every single week and it's not news. And so I think it's just a pay to play system. So I'm going to skip that entirely. Moving on to number nine, there's a panic buying that shifts from toilet paper to pot stocks amid COVID-19. There's uh, eight stocks that jump over 150%. Got to kind of be careful though, because some penny stocks are easy to uh, make that increase. And especially with the volatility, you're going to see a lot of that. Uh, and so that's going to create some more FOMO as people think that they're going to be able to get in and make some of those, those 150% gains. We saw Tilray made 104% in just three or four trading days. Uh, that's when they were trading at like three and a half dollars. There are some cannabis stocks that are skyrocketing uh, because they were so depressed earlier, uh, having been hit hard even before coronavirus last year, that uh, with the systemic uh, collapse of everything, the sin stocks that we're seeing are uh, starting to come out earlier with more of a V-shaped recovery than, than the other uh, stocks in the S&P and Dow. So since reaching new lows during the stock market's massive coronavirus correction, most cannabis stocks have reversed sharply and now soaring at a time when no one could have predicted. Uh, yet we predicted that 10 months ago when we did investing with SIN stocks. Uh, Vice stocks all have an inverse relationship to the overall market. So if you've been listening to this podcast, it didn't come out of nowhere. You were warned 10 months ago. Uh, number eight on the list, cannabis stocks extend a rally as the pot sector awakens. Cureleaf reports strong earnings. Uh, I, I wouldn't touch Cureleaf with your money. I think there's going to be some information that comes out. And I'm totally speculating here. Uh, this is not financial advice. But I, I think Cureleaf has not had an arm's length distance. I think that uh, there's going to be some uh, potential lawsuits because of the $800, $900 million acquisitions that they had earlier in the year. So when their stock price does decrease, I think you're going to see a lot of people kind of um, come out of the woodworks with lawsuits. Uh, but for the second straight day in a row, you have the multi-state operator or MSOs like Cureleaf reporting earnings. And so you're going to see uh, probably some strong performance as they've cut costs, which brings us to number seven. Cureleaf is worth $22 a share. Uh, Beacon Securities analyst said that they're keeping uh, that a strong rating reiterating his buy rating at a $22 price target for Cure Leaf, saying that so far the company's operations haven't been disrupted. Well, hardly anybody's quote operations have been disrupted. Yes, we've had to work from home. Some of the retail shops in Nevada have been closed, but there hasn't really been a supply chain disruption yet. Everyone's been forced to shut down, but as soon as there's uh, a shortage in steel or uh, hoop houses, outdoor, LEDs, uh, soil, uh, all of those little things that everybody needs to complete whatever they're working on from a car to an airplane to cannabis, everyone is missing out because no one's ma manufacturing anything and yet that hasn't hit yet. So we're still waiting for the fundamentals to hit that huge decrease in the stock market that was fear based. And so when that fundamentals finally catches up to the fear, we'll see a second wave of decrease where nothing is left untouched. We'll see more devaluing from the entire market before that V-shape recovery. So we've got a dead cat bounce here uh, with a potential V-shape recovery down the road. Uh, moving on to number six, MedMed Advanced is a potential treatment for opioid addiction and the further clinical testing. MindMed, I think I said MedMen, <laughs> they're continuing to research a uh, psychedelic firm, MindMed. Uh, I'm going to skip this one entirely because, again, that's a pay to play. Number five is uh, why Tilray stock is soaring again after a terrible year. Um, I think uh, Brandon Kennedy is kind of just running this thing blind. He might as well smoke. Uh, he's not a smoker. doesn't know anything about cannabis, uh, but he might as well just get high because he's not going to be doing anything to this company. He has no strategic partner, no corporate interests, um, no automation, 
not really sure what they're doing. So a month ago, shares of the Canadian licensed producer Tilray closed at $16 on March 25th. They were five bucks. And then earlier in the afternoon on the 26th, they traded around $8, up around 67%. Uh, we got in <clears throat> when they were around three and a half dollars. Uh, they closed on Friday at over seven, maybe eight bucks. So we had uh, a huge increase uh, from Tilray. Green Thumb shares were battered down pretty pretty strong, but uh, number four on the list is that Green Thumb cannabis sales soared in the fourth quarter. So the news wasn't as great for the U.S. cannabis operator's bottom line as uh, Green Thumb Industries announced its 2019 fourth quarter full year earnings after the market closed last week. So there's news that could help accelerate the stock's comeback, question mark. There's some highlights from the company's fourth quarter update. Uh, unless they, you know, keep rolling with automation and trying to to scale and expand and, you know, utilize Latin America for for production, I don't think they're really going to go anywhere. Number three on the list is Champion Brands uh, has a technical breakout, a continuation of an uptrend that's uh, potentially likely. So psychedelic stock champion brand soared 15% on Wednesday. A lot of speculation in this stock. Again, we're going to move on. I think that's more of a pay to play. Um, I don't really think that's news. I think that is just uh, somebody paying to to get the uh, press out there. So we're going to move on to number two, which is that there are some cannabis stocks that could survive the corona crash. We've warned on this podcast before about investing in any individual security or equity or stock. Look at a portfolio. So while some of these might look enticing, I don't think the industry has hit its rock bottom yet. And a lot of these companies aren't going to survive. So look at getting into an index instead of looking at some hype about individual you know, opportunities. If you, if you can gamble, do it then, um, you know, Vegas is closed, gives you an opportunity to, to gamble in the stock market. Um, but if you're looking at investing, I, I would look at an index overall. Number one on the list is that there's some pot stocks that soared today as demand for cannabis spikes amid the COVID-19 pandemic. So the coronavirus outbreak has forced many to self-quarantine, resulting in surging demand for cannabis. Financial markets fell again, so some cannabis, <laughs> some cannabis stocks soared in reaction to COVID. Uh, there was a lot of people that were rushing to the doors more out of fear for closures. And so when you're looking at potential closers of stores, you're going to rush in and try and get toilet paper and cannabis and anything you can. But since cannabis stores have been deemed essential businesses in at least six states, um, I think Massachusetts is the only one where rec shops are closed, but medical is open. Outside of that, uh, they're all open. So um, I think you're going to see some leveling out. Um, all in all, I think it'll probably just be consistent as people were hoarding to buy and then they didn't return. Um, so I think at the end of the month, we'll probably see a leveling out um, as people aren't going back. They're remaining in their houses. Um, you know, Washington and California, all these states have um, self quarantine, stay at home orders. So we don't have delivery here in Washington. So that's going to really kind of limit what you're able to get. They do have curbside pickups. You can pre order in advance with some steep discounts, 15 to 55%, uh, depending on the product and day. So you can go in. I think they were offering 30% discounts on ounces, 55% discounts on particular products, 15% uh, discounts on uh, pre-rolls and some vape products. So every day is different, but they are offering significant discounts. They're forcing you to pre-order and then you can go in and get that curbside pickup. Uh, it is outlined in chalk to say six feet away. So when you're standing in line, you're, you're not uh, too close to people. So that is the way that they're able to remain open. Looking at our cannabis index from last week, we were up 42% uh, versus MJ down 56 and Podex down 56% from uh, August 1st until last week. Year to date returns, we're up 11.5%, whereas MJ is down negative 29 and Podex is down negative 34%. Uh, since January. So we're still positive. The other uh, competition is negative. And that just means that um, we have got a, an artificial intelligence based algorithm or a trading robot, as I call it. And so they're not making the trading robot that we have doesn't make as many risky 
bets. So we don't have to um, go out and, and try and get as risky returns as some of these other ETFs or uh, indexes have to um, in order to get themselves out of this hole. So some have already closed and some are going after um, some really risky bets. So I'm not sure that they're going to stick around long term. If they can't get themselves out of a hole, they're going to see a flea of investors. Uh, ticker symbol MJ, the ETF MG Alternative Harvest Index, already saw their market cap go from $800 million, uh, to $600 million. So they lost a quarter of a billion uh, just in the last year as people have fled that. Um, so maybe once uh, we get this license to an institutional investor or go public and it's available to non-accredited, non-institutional investors, then we can get the word out there a little bit more but right now. That's the way that the, the world works. Uh, you got to be an institutional accredited investor until it's publicly traded or licensed by a broker. So hopefully in the near term, we'll get that out there as we're making some amazing returns, but you're just going to have to stick with us and find out what happens. So with that, we're going to roll this one up. I'm Josh Kincaid. This is the talking hitch don't forget to like share and subscribe or don't and i'm out